Uh, maybe, maybe what could be low probability, but could be um, uh, the biggest story of the year, maybe the biggest story of the decade, um, is the rising protests in uh, in China. Uh, the protests are over zero COVID lockdowns, uh, and um, uh, in in kind of the, the the government's general response to COVID and. The fact that uh, some people died in a fire, interesting, the city in which the fire happened, where people died, is, uh, was in, um, in the western part of China, so it was close to where the, uh, I think the, the Uyghurs live, so it, you know, suddenly that region is important. People are, people are going out and demonstrating, they're demonstrating, they were yesterday demonstrating in Beijing and Shanghai, and in pretty much uh, every major city in China. There were, according to the press, there were uh, demonstrations at 50 different universities uh, in China, uh, and um, uh, 50, uh, yes, or 50 different universities. So really unprecedented for China. We, we've seen demonstrations in China. We've seen demonstrations around uh, working conditions in some places. We've seen demonstrations around... Um, Financial collapse, runs on banks, uh, where people lost money and they demonstrated. We've seen demonstrations when the stock market collapsed. We've seen demonstrations around uh, specific issues. They usually are local, they're not nationwide, and they usually stop very quickly. These are the broadest demonstrations in terms of scope, in terms of number of cities, in terms of no, probably number of people involved maybe since Tiananmen Square, maybe since 1989. Um, that is huge. Certainly, this is uh, the biggest challenge that Xi has faced since he took over as premier 10 years ago. Uh, and uh, this is the first big challenge to his, basically, ascension to a dictator for life uh, in China. Uh, you know, the... the, 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 um, uh, the uh, vaccination rate in China is very low, and to the extent that they uh, were vaccinated, they were vaccinated with very ineffective, uh, very ineffective uh, Chinese vaccines early on uh, in uh, in 2021. Uh, so, uh, so vaccines have not played much of a role uh, in China. The, I think the regime is really scared of COVID. They're scared of what happens in the hospitals. They're scared of what happens if a million people die the, 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 uh, of COVID. They're afraid of the social upheaval that will result from that. And in trying to combat that, uh, they have fallen into the trap of, uh, uh, of uh, social unrest because of their measures to lock everybody down. Uh, it, we'll get in a minute to, to, to more of the demonstrations, but um, the, the Chinese vaccines that are being used in other in other countries are being particularly uh, uh, ineffective. So uh, Chinese vaccines are just not being good. Um, and China has resisted using uh, Western vaccines, partially because I think they view that as a sign of defeat. Their own companies, which are trying desperately to develop mRNA vaccines, uh, have, have failed. It, it's, it's, it's a complicated process. It's not easy. Uh, and they're still trying, but they failed. And the the condition under which uh, China was willing to buy Moderna and Pfizer vaccines was if uh, Pfizer and Moderna shared their intellectual property with China, which my understanding is at least Moderna turned them down. I think Pfizer did as well. Um, and uh, so China turned, turned them down, rejected them. So, um, I mean, basically uh, the, the, what has happened is uh, China is not vaccinated. And, and they're petrified of death rates. They're petrified of what will happen. Uh, but of course, the lockdowns have resulted in the kind of social unrest that terrifies them. Um, it's not like the rulers in China care about the loss of life. It's more about they care about the, the social upheaval that might result from that loss of life. What's really interesting about these demonstrations is that they are now not limited to just open up COVID, stop COVID restrictions. The demonstrators are brazenly calling for Xi to leave office 
and they are brazenly calling even for the downfall of the Chinese Communist Party. Now that never happens. So even demonstrations in the past that have happened in China are usually limited to a particular issue or a particular topic and focus on that and concentrate on that and are limited to that. But here what you get is people actually demanding that the Communist Party stop ruling China. I mean, that is a revolution. I, I mean, it's a revolution if it succeeds, but it's, it's calling, in a sense, for real change. And that, again, you haven't seen on a scale in China since, um, you know, since the, uh, since the 1989 Tiananmen Square. I mean, I wish I, 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 I could communicate with some of the people who have brought me to China many times, kind of the people who are, uh, uh, have been fighting for liberty and freedom in China for, for decades, the, the people who, who uh, were involved in promoting Ayn Rand's ideas, but also the ideas of free market economists, in China it would be fascinating right now to talk to them and find out what they are thinking and what they, how they view what is going on. It, it, it is hard. Um, maybe, you know what, maybe I should look them up on Telegram. So uh, that's, that's what I could, you know, I could, I could try to look them up on Telegram and maybe see if I can talk to them through that. I'm sure their Telegram channels with dissidents in China are expressing their views. Um, so this morning, there were no demonstrations in Beijing and Shanghai. And the reason for that is probably, whoops, what happened to my camera? Um, all right, I think that's, it's still not quite right, but OK. I mean, it's moved around a little. There we go, that's better. Uh, although now this is, so the camera's tilted down, which shows my mic. That's fine. Um, uh, so today there was no demonstration in Beijing and Taiwan uh, uh, to a large extent because there was massive police presence in both places. Uh, police have gathered around the places where last night there were demonstrations. They are stopping people in the street. They are taking their cell phones and uh, trying to determine whether on their cell phones they have uh, VPNs. Uh, VPNs are, for the most part, illegal in China, although most Chinese that I know, at least, use them uh, uh, constantly. So they're checking VPNs on people's phone. They're also checking to see if they have Telegram app on people's phone. Again, Telegram is not allowed for use in China, which suggests that it's not allowed because the Chinese can't actually monitor it because of its strong encryption. Uh, so, uh, uh, you know, the, the fear of demonstrators in China is, is very simple. The, the Chinese state is a uh, is to a large extent a police state. It monitors. It it knows who you are. Uh, the fear is uh, jail. The fear is uh, you know jail for, for for long periods of time, kangaroo courts, um, and of course because they have m cameras and they monitor social media extensively, they know who you are, what you are. They have facial recognition software. So the fact that people are going out into the streets, the fact that people are expressing their opinions, the fact that they are chanting. Um, it, it suggests that, um, uh, you know, people are, are desperate or, or, or less afraid than they used to be and now are speaking up. Uh, I, I think it's just a matter of time. Now, just a matter of time could be 50 years, but it's just a matter of time before the Chinese actually rebel against the powers to be. I think they're in for a long period of economic stagnation. Uh, and, and, and if this zero COVID policy continues economic depression, uh, which will rile people up and, and upset the Chinese dramatically. I mean, the trade-off Chinese have accepted historically has been as long as we have economic growth, as long as we get, become wealthy, as long as the poor become rich or, or become middle class, as long as things are going well, then, okay, we'll, we'll let you be authoritarian. But if, if part of that, ga that deal is, no, the economy's not going to grow anymore, um, then um, I'm not sure the Chinese people are going to just sit back and accept the authoritarian nature of the regime. I saw somebody tweet to me today saying, uh, China's always been authoritarian, they're always going to be authoritarian, that nothing's going to change. I, that's uh, super defeatist. Uh, uh, the West was always authoritarian until it wasn't authoritarian. And that took well into the 19th century for the West not to become authoritarian. Uh, you know, the, 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 the kings were supposedly messengers of God who could do anything and could rule 
you know, uh, uh, anyway, you, you had emperors, you had, anyway, it, cultures change. And I think the last 40 years have brought real change to China. And people have real expectations about certain aspects of their freedom. And I think those expectations are growing. And as Chinese, more and more and more Chinese are educated in places like the United States and England and uh, in Europe more generally, they come to greater appreciation of freedom and liberty. And at some point, they're going to demand it. The question is when. Is this the beginning? One can hope, but it's unlikely. Um, but it is, um, it, it, it is heartening to see the Chinese people expressing themselves. It's heartening to see the Chinese people going out there and, 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 and actually talking about this. Also, to those of you, and I know there are quite a few of you out there, who believe that uh, since COVID is a scam and COVID never existed and people don't die of COVID, um, th that uh, the Chinese don't, this is not really lockdowns over COVID, this is really lockdowns in order to control people. Well, this is a bit of a backlash. This is a big of, of a backlash against that theory of control. Also, it is, uh, you, you don't understand China and you don't understand the regime and you don't understand the 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 kind of what's going on in China, if you think that in the name of this kind of control, um, uh, which is, uh, you know, uh, temporary and, uh, and, and China already had massive control, um, if you think that it is, um, that China is willing to sacrifice its economy, sacrifice its wealth, sacrifice its position in the world, sacrifice its potential uh, military buildup, because it's going to become poorer because of these lockdowns. Um, no, I mean, this is about a fear of COVID. This is, uh, 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 sure, it's always about control. It was control in the West. It's certainly about control in China. But it's fundamentally driven by a fear of COVID and using that fear. Um, China has the mechanisms of control. It doesn't have to lock people up in their homes. And it doesn't have to keep pushing and pushing and pushing for years. Uh, when, uh, you know, what is really being sacrificed, other than obviously human liberty, what's really being sacrificed is massive economic success. So no, this is a combination of the, of the regime fearing COVID outbreaks and what they will do and how they will be blamed of it after they have promised zero COVID. And this is a regime that is comfortable and wants to maintain control. And this is a regime that is struggling with now what's going to happen to the economy, but it is more afraid, I think, of what happens if COVID spreads than it is afraid of, um, of the economy. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there is a lot of mythology in the West about COVID, uh, and I think, uh, I think that that mythology exists less um, in, um, in Asia. I think they're much more realistic about COVID. All right, um, let's see. So, yeah, this is... Exciting, potentially. We'll see where it goes. We'll see how it develops. Something to watch. First crack, maybe. Probably not the revolution, but maybe a first crack. Maybe, uh, uh, you know, the first indication that Chinese are willing to fight, that the Chinese are willing to resist. Uh, maybe a first kind of uh, warning signal to Xi that his position is not as secure as maybe he has thought it is. And, and maybe a, a push for some within the Chinese Communist Party to say, huh, maybe we've given Xi too much power, maybe, because I think the next step is not liberty in China. It's not that they move from the political system they have today to political system of freedom like that or, or through a civil war. I think, I think the real shift is going to be some kind of internal uh, struggle which leads uh, to uh, Xi being replaced by somebody more liberal by somebody more open, both in terms of economic freedom and in terms maybe of some political freedom, uh, and, and and then uh, an evaluation at that point of whether the population is push, 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 and then maybe gradual movement towards greater political freedom. It's not going to happen, I don't think, in China all at once. Uh, I don't think it'll happen through a civil war, but it could happen through internal strife within the, Ch the Chinese Communist Party. Clearly, there are people who are resisting Xi. Clearly, there are people who don't agree with Xi's authorita uh, increased authoritarianism. 
with Xi's increased insistence on controls, increased insistence on, um, on uh, centralizing power around him. Most of those people uh, have, been, uh, have been ousted from the Politburo, from the governing body, but they are there. They're in the Chinese Communist Party. And, uh, and, and uh, these kind of demonstrations, this kind of social upheaval could be a stimulus for them uh, to take control. Uh, but again, we will see. Uh, it, it, this is uh, evolving, and it won't all happen at once. I think, again, this is a little crack, and then there'll be maybe a future crack, and there'll be more cracks, and then maybe things will start happening faster. But uh, again, I am inspired by people willing to fight for their own freedom, they fight for their own liberty, and, and, uh, and certainly some Chinese are willing to do that right now and taking real risks, uh, real risk with their life in order to do it. So uh, let's keep chipping away at the Chinese wall at the Chinese authoritarian state. Uh, Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbrookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one of those uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and of course subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.